I still see you, I don't see me. Yes. You you won't see you. You're live. Okay, so I won't see me. No, no you you'll see me. You're live right now. Go ahead, you're on. Greetings, everybody. Welcome uh, to the first show. Uh, I guess because of who you guys are and who I am, we're not going to need one of these. As a matter of fact, I do encourage you to touch your face. It's not a problem just to touch your face as well. Uh, thank you for viewing. Uh, this is going to be a, a little bit of uh, news with uh, Christian street preaching uh, involved in there too. So uh, that's what this channel is going to be. It's going to be dealing with current events and situations where your church may not discuss these matters. For some particular reason, uh, I don't know. But before we get started... I'd like to point something out. I don't know in the city that you live, but in the city that I live, before we have news, we have a weather and traffic report. And so before I get into the news of today and deal with that, I like to talk a little bit about weather and traffic. I want you to understand that today's weather in Hellfire will be hot again. It was hot yesterday, and it's unbearable, and we don't see end, any ending in the end of this hot, burning hellfire. The heat index cannot be read because it's so hot. This is, this is your weather in hell. Even a fingertip with a drop of water for your tongue will have a burning sensation when tested. It will not cool you. Those poor souls in that state are burning, frying like in hot oil. No drink can cool you. No air condition will work. No sunscreen will protect you. There is no shade. It's an eternal punishment. And I don't apologize for my God. Remember, there are degrees of punishment, much like in our own courts today. Jesus Christ said, red letters, you shall receive greater damnation. For those of you that assume hell is just a place where you disintegrate, like the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Seventh-day Adventists do, uh, you'd have a problem with that greater damnation. What does that mean? These people uh, perish uh, faster or slower? Uh, no, greater damnation means degrees of punishment for your sin. For that person, the weather there in his section is burning in the blue flame. This is hellfire. And again, I don't apologize for it. Yesterday, uh, uh, marked the sixth anniversary of the death of Robin Williams. And uh, because I live in Los Angeles, we've been preaching to these celebrities for over 40 years. Uh, you know, you name it. If it's a Hollywood show from the Grammys to the Emmys to the Academy Awards, we've been out there preaching to these guys. And, um, you know, before they walk the red carpet, they're actually screaming and hollering at us. There are times the paparazzi would hang around us because they get to see the reaction of these guys. And so uh, I do actually on my Facebook page post anniversaries of these dead celebrities. Six years ago, Robin Williams died. Not everything that glitters is gold. As this man made the world laugh, but he died with suicide. He lived in a dark world, and his savior was death. If you think John Williams is in the loving arms of Jesus, you don't know the Jesus Christ of the Bible. As a matter of fact, the Bible says only few will be saved. That's what the Bible says. Your issue is not with me, it's with the God of the Bible. He was a hot celebrity, 
here on earth and in his new life, he will be a hot eternal person. My advice to you, don't be John Williams. Uh, these celebrities live a very shallow life. Uh, it is unique, these guys, when you see them. They would love to just walk into a Walmart. They can't because of their status. So most of these celebrities have to go to Rodale Drive where they shut down the store. They let these celebrities in the back door and, you know, they buy, you know, $65,000 worth of product and they have the store to themselves. But they'd love to just go to a McDonald's or sit down and get a drink. They can't because of that fame. So even with all that fame, that money, that joy that it appeared he had, Robin Williams is in hell. And the temperature where he's at is burning. So once we got rid of the, 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 uh, the weather, let's talk a little traffic. I don't know about your news, but uh, in Los Angeles, we always have in the morning traffic. We've got all these freeways, all these cars, just tons of bodies everywhere. Uh, and that's not even including the illegal alien. We got just bodies everywhere. Now, here is the report for your traffic. All lanes on the broad road that leads to destruction are full. Heavy traffic on those lanes. And for those of you that follow men rather than God, there has been seen a large hole on the road and both will fall into the ditch. Be advised, God in his great love and mercy has sent out workers trying to reroute you with signs. Please take heed as they are warnings for you to exit the road that you're on and to turn to the lane that leads to a, a righteous narrow road. So that's your weather and that's your traffic. Let's get into a news. Uh, as most of you know, I'm from uh, Los Angeles, and uh, it's considered an extremely liberal state. Let's be sincere about this. You want a liberal state, go to Washington. Go to Oregon. Actually, Oregon makes California look very conservative. Unfortunately, California has the name and, uh, you know, what happens in California can affect worldwide. We have the fashion, we have TVs, we have people that influence, uh, and we can actually generate a lot of things worldwide when it happens here in Los Angeles. But you want to talk about liberal Oregon, specifically a Portland. Portland is incredibly wicked and evil. You think California, San Francisco's liberal. Uh, you need to walk into Portland. About three years ago, maybe two years ago, I can't remember how many years it's been, we've got some street preachers out over in Portland, Oregon, and they showed some videos of some of the exploits that they were doing when they were out in the streets in Portland preaching. And of course, our critics were saying, you guys are, are getting physical. You're pushing these guys. Uh, you're you're only antagonizing them. Well, the world is starting to see what happens in Portland and the audience those men had to preach to. Okay, they're wicked people. These are people that are burning, looting, and attacking police. And these men were once going out there and preaching. And for those of you that criticize them, I think a public apology is due because you have no idea the, the uh, people that they had to preach to, that God sent them there. All you saw was a couple minute video where they had to push some heathen so they can get that preaching done. But Portland is extremely involved with the wickedness. You got riots on Portland. I believe it's uh, day 76 of straight riots. Okay, this is Oregon. Of course, these riots started after George, uh, that black guy, was killed. I don't know his full name. I think his name was Bore George. I, I can't remember. I can't uh, put all these Georges together. But Bore George, I believe, was his name. I, I don't know. The police, in, I believe, in Portland, Oregon, should do their job. 
they are trained for doing a job and unfortunately they can't do their job because the mayor and the governor of Oregon is extremely liberal and are tying these guys so they can't do their job. As a Christian, uh, I believe the police should do their job. I believe when these criminals, these thugs get arrested, uh, they should not be released and open to the public again. I believe they should only get released when the rioting in Portland stops. If it takes another six months, they're sitting in a cell for six months. As a Christian, that's my advice to our government, to those who break the law purposely. These guys have so much hatred uh, for our country, it's unbelievable. You have people right now that are dying, risking their lives to come into this country, and yet you have those people who have so much admonity against our country. It's just amazing. Absolutely shocking. I say put them in jail until all the riots stop, and then they can maybe get released. I know free speech. I understand free speech. I've been involved in public preaching for 40 years. There isn't a case that goes on a week that one of our members is fighting in court. As a matter of fact, right now I'm involved in a citation I received in Savannah back in March, and the city's ready to drop that charge. Uh, I understand free speech, constantly arguing it. One of our cases even went to the Supreme Court, which they actually kept a certain circuit and their ruling. You know, not everybody can say my case went to the Supreme Court. You say that all the time. I'll sue you to the Supreme Court. Chances of even going that high are slim. We did. You may not like our approach. You may not like our style. But if you ever get arrested on the sidewalk for passing on a track or holding a gospel sign, your attorney will most likely use one of our cases to keep you on the sidewalk and keep our free speech. So I do understand free speech. What's going on in Portland is not free speech. What's going on in Portland is yelling fire in a crowded theater. Not only yelling fire, those peaceful protesters are burning the theater. That's not free speech. I understand free speech. I wish to thank uh, the state of Utah. Because the state of Utah is a perfect example of what to do with these criminals. The state of Utah has come up with a life sentence for those arrested. As they will be charged with something that's in the books called gang enhancement crimes. And with that, the state of Utah can make it a felony. And a felony that will put you in for the rest of your life in prison. Right now, Utah is holding seven suspects under that law, and I say, God bless you guys in Utah. You ought to do that. I hope Utah becomes a, an example on free speech. I have history with Utah. Okay, uh, In April and October, we've gone to the Mormon convention, and we preached at the Mormons uh, during those months. And uh, boy, we've had issues uh, with free speech. We had a fight tooth and nail for that sidewalk. And when we were going to court against Salt Lake City, uh, you know, do understand the church is in bed with the police. The church is in bed with the media. The church is in bed with the government. It was a David versus Goliath uh, court case. In fact, no lawyer wanted to actually take our case because he'd be... Uh, disbarred uh, there in Salt Lake City. It was another guy who had nothing to do with free speech who was willing to take our case. And we did. We won. We were constantly in court with Salt Lake City. So they do understand the concept of free speech. As a matter of fact, it got so bad, the Mormon church bought a small section on Main Street right next to their temple just to tell us Reuben, it's now considered private property. You can't walk on Main Street. That cost the Mormons $70 million to buy that section and rebuild. Okay, 
That's what a motley crew of street preachers did to that religion. Salt Lake City, Utah, they do understand free speech. Trust me, they've dealt with us, and many of them don't like it, what we do. However, on this one, I have to side with Utah. And I say, God bless you. I hope you're an example. These are criminals. When you start macing, shooting, lasering police, burning, removing brakes from police cars, uh, that's something worthy of a life sentence, in my opinion. I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, this uh, Boar George. I don't know if any of you have heard, but there is a video out. And the video that has been taken out has been from the police camcorder. Okay, so we get a little bit more of what took place when that man was on the floor with a knee to his chest. If you watch this criminal, he was a criminal. He was a drug addict. He was trying to pass uh, large phony bills at a liquor store. He was seen being pulled out of his car. And of course, you know, he plays the old, I'm innocent. What am I doing? Leave me alone. He's whining. He knows what he did. And he started whining before they were even pulling him out of the car. The officers did pull him out of the car. And because he refused to comply, uh, they had to get physical with the guy. During the time that he's resisting arrest, this is all from the camcorder, the whole time he's screaming that he is in pain, he is, uh, his breathing is restricted. He's actually saying this when he's standing up, okay? That just changes everything. When that officer put him down, he has already been screaming those things standing up before the cuffs were on. So uh, it, it's not like the officer purposely went out and killed this man. If you think police officers are a bunch of racists, if you think the academy teaches the police officers how to beat down black people, uh, you don't know anything about police, okay? I've got stories about police officers and how I've been abused and how my free speech have been abused and the things they put me to. You would have assumed I'd be leading the charge against the police department, but I'm not. Uh, those guys have a very difficult job to do and uh, God bless them for what they're doing. That officer, his intention was not to murder Boar George. He, it, it wasn't at all. He just chose it. He, he started fighting right from the very beginning. And CNN had this video for quite some time. Problem is, CNN didn't want to play it. It's amazing how they're going to try to manipulate the crowd. You want to see a little bit more about this uh, guy, George, and, and the news that he's done? This past weekend in Chicago... It was like all other weekends in Chicago. 40 people shot, four dead. And remember, this is a state that has uh, hard gun rules. Okay, figure that one out. Uh, it's the bad guys who own the gun. You're probably not going to hear much of this, but uh, the amount of dead people in shooting every weekend in that city is off the charts. And the reason why it's not local news, it's black on black. That's the only reason why. Let's be very blunt about it. Uh, no pun intended, but let's call a spade a spade. It's black on black. That's why. Not much is said on that black on black. They looted dozens of stores just this past weekend. Broke windows. Smashed things. With property damage upwards of $500 million. That's to make a statement for the criminal who died. And what did Black Lives Matter do? I'll tell you what Black Lives Matter did. Black Lives Matter had a rally. And in that rally, <laughs> they, uh, they demanded that, the, that those that were arrested be released and drop charges. 
The police in Chicago arrested over 100 peaceful protesters and 13 officers were injured during, during those arrests. It was something that was well thought of because uh, the cars came, stopped, they busted windows, they ran inside, they put their merchandise inside of the, um, the cars and all drove away. And um, call me a racist, but 85% uh, of those people were black. Again, let's call a spade a spade. Is that making sense? Is that making a, a statement to the world? This is what we're doing because you've killed one of our own. You guys are killing each other. And that's just the city of Chicago. How do we stop them? I say we shoot them. I say the police officers should have the liberty just to shoot them dead because uh, they're criminals. And that's the only thing criminals understand. You're on their frequency. And that, in my opinion, is how you stop them. So that's a little bit of, uh, of my version of weather, traffic, and news of what's going on here today. And of course, that's what the little uh, street preacher slant to it. You may disagree with it, but uh, praise the Lord, that's my opinion on it. And uh, I, um, I assure you, there are many people who believe like me, they just can't say it. I remember when O.J. Simpson was caught, I would ask white folks, is he guilty? And, you know, they had to lay this foundation. Uh, Brother Reuben, there's not a racist bone in my body. Uh, I would walk for, for their freedom. I, I listened to Martin Luther King. They had to run all this stuff before they can say, yes, he's guilty. How about just doing what God says and uh, just bluntly saying what it is? If they're going to be so bold in the streets, uh, the police need to be just as bold to even out the teeter-totter. And uh, that's just me. That's just my, my uh, news. Uh, we, we're going to have a little window of time for questions. And uh, there are a couple of people that had emailed me a couple of questions in advance. And then I'll check with some of the questions you have here. So if you do have any questions to pick my brain, rather than listening to somebody on the Internet, hey, here's your chance to say what you can hear. You'll be surprised what people have accused me of over the years. Uh, let's see, I'm a Mason, I'm a government agent, I'm a secret police, I'm a Catholic, uh, you know, I'm a secret Mormon, I'm an ex-homo, uh, I'm a drunkard, I'm an atheist, uh, my whole motive is to turn people off. It's amazing what people can say about you. So here's your chance to maybe get something and ask me a question. If I don't get to it, do understand uh, there's going to be a number of questions coming in. Plus on my email, I do get a number of questions. So um, it does take a little bit to answer some of those. This question is from a sister named Susie Timber. And she says, what does the Bible say about voting or not voting? Some Christians say we shouldn't get involved in politics. Uh, Susie, uh, I say Christianity should be involved in every aspect of life. Okay, that's my opinion. We have the truth so much, we should be involved in every aspect of life. And because we live in America, uh, we have the right to vote. Okay, I have the right to own a gun. I'm not a felon. I have the right to that public sidewalk. Right now, I'm exercising my right to freedom of the press. This is what I believe, and I'm amplifying it. So, uh, you know, just because it's not in the Bible doesn't mean God is not concerned about it. Because uh, that same individual that wants to say that uh, will not find the word Facebook in the Bible. Yet, he'll use that. That same individual will not find the word uh, YouTube in the Bible, yet he'll use that. Uh, that same individual will not find the word automobile in the Bible, yet he will use that. But yet when it comes to voting, he's going to back away. Uh, something's wrong with that. In my opinion, if you want to talk to me about politics and you haven't proven that you voted, uh, as far as I'm concerned, conversation is ended. It's like trying to talk to me about Bible and try to refute the Bible when you don't even read the Bible. 
And so at least you need to vote to at least get my attention so we can discuss what it is that uh, we need to talk about. Just because certain words are not in the Bible, again, doesn't mean it's not biblical. Hate to break the news to you. And I'm sure after I say this, I'm going to hear some wine sacks bursting. Uh, America is not found in the Bible. Unless you spiritualize verses, America is not found in the Bible. Uh, yet we were exceedingly involved in, uh, in helping Israel become a nation. Uh, we were involved in uh, fighting Hitler so that Jews wouldn't be uh, nothing more than a bar of soap or a lampshade. God used this Gentile nation to get Israel out. Israel's the size of Rhode Island and it's surrounded by countries that hate them. They don't mess with Israel because God has used us as a 300 pound gorilla to help Israel. So you would assume somewhere in scripture, America can be found. And I'm familiar with the young eagle. I understand all these, you gotta spiritualize it to make it happen. Let's just be blunt. It's just not there. Be honest. Not everything rotates around America. I understand you're an American and uh, everything has to rotate around us. That's not what the way, that's not the way God has intended. So uh, Jesus said something. It's not a John 3.16, so most of you might not even see it. He made a statement. Jesus Christ said, occupy till I come. That's what he said occupy till I come. Those words mean I will do just that. I will occupy. Unfortunately, I don't live in another country. I live in the U.S., so I will occupy in the U.S. I will live accordingly in the U.S., and I will try to keep the statutes of God as we can because this country has a rich history of Christianity. Uh, and if you don't think so, you can even leave and go to another country. We preached at other countries. And Christianity is still considered the religion here in America. I mean, uh, this is a country like no other country. We will annihilate you with our, with our military and turn around and rebuild you. What other country in the history of the world has done that? We rebuilt uh, Germany. We rebuilt Japan. We actually owe these guys money now. We'll go in and risk our boys and girls to get in there and fight for your right and to release you. And then we turn around and give you your country back. Normally, it's if we go in there and fight, it's ours. And so I really am thankful to our military that gives us the freedom to do what it is we do. And uh, just so that you guys don't think I am a sexist, um, I do favor females in the military, okay? Uh, there is nothing worse than an angry lesbian on her period that will kill anybody. So, you know, I'm not a sexist. We need some girls in there. They will, they kill their own babies. They hate men. So you get some angry lesbo in there, put a uniform on her, slap her in the forehead, point her where to go. She'll kill for you. I'm not a sexist. Another question I get is, um, a brother, who do you think will win the election? This is uh, said from a brother named Jesse from New Mexico. Brother, who do you think will win the election? Okay, I, I'm not, uh, this is not a thus saith the Lord. This is not a prophecy. I'm not Gene Dixon's lost cousin. This is my opinion. And I'm, I got my ear to the track. And uh, I get a chance to see things that maybe you don't because we deal with the public over and over and over. I believe that Trump will want to go ahead and take it. It's going to be a hands down Trump. The media, celebrities, sports gods, and everyone on the left hate him. And he's still going to do fine. Okay. Uh, you don't hear Trump supporters because they kind of keep it to themselves. And if you listen to all the polls, remember, they said this about Hillary 
And some of you people probably even believe that back then. Uh, there's a track record of me voting for Trump when there were about eight Republicans still fighting for it. I just like the guy just to get a politician out and put a businessman there. I own a small business in Los Angeles. And if you can run the country like a business, man, you got my vote. And that's precisely what he what he did. Uh, Trump was not this hardcore of a Republican. The media, the leftist, you pushed him there. So he is now in our camp. Trump wasn't really hard against uh, abortion. You media, you pushed him there. You liberals, you angry women, you pushed him into my camp. And I'll gladly take the guy. Trump was, you know, kind of just, well, uh, you know, just have a homosexual. He's even not really done a lot uh, for the gays. And they're upset at him. But again, it's because the left have forced him into that corner. You can bring up something that Trump has done in the past. I'm talking about the present, current Trump today. Uh, is he uh, our leader? Absolutely. Is he our spiritual leader? No. He's just our president. That's why I voted for Trump. I don't worship him. I don't pray in his name. I don't have a tattoo with the word Trump. But I will endorse the man. I am a Christian patriot. I love my country and will die for my faith. There are many people who are patriots. And I understand. I, I thank you for your patriotism. But you're heading for hell. You need to clean that up. You need to be a Christian patriot. A Trump is not going to give us all the answers. Uh, like any other president, uh, you know, we have disagreed with. Uh, the first time I started going out was in the 80s when Ronald Reagan was president. We've been going to the White House numerous times a year reminding the president, sir, you did put your hand on a Bible. That's, that's this book. This is what happens when you're sworn into office. You put your hand on this book. Not the Book of Mormon, not the Quran, not the Penthouse magazine. Uh, you put your hand on the Bible. And you say, so help me God. And we constantly have been going out there preaching to our president and telling them, uh, this is what the Bible says. This is what your hand was on. Uh, even Obama, his eight years, we went out there and stood in front of the White House and told them, uh, Mr. President, you know, we were witnessed you putting your split hoof on that Bible. And uh, God's going to judge you by that, Obama. And he sure did. He is judging America. Uh, God has been very uh, lenient with our country, uh, long-suffering with our country. And so uh, when he gives us a guy like Trump, I appreciate that. In your Bible, we have a man. He was a king. His name was King Asa. Okay? He did not remove those high places, and he didn't do certain things that God required good kings to do. But there's a small verse in regards to King Asa when he died. The Bible says King Asa had a perfect heart before God. Wow. For those of you who say Trump is not a Christian, not even saved, let me advise you of something. This man promotes more Christianity at his workplace than you probably have ever done since you've been working there. And you have the gall to say he's not promoting Christianity. Just because he says something wrong or a particular speech, uh, I think something is definitely wrong with that. I believe the Democrats will lose. This is my opinion. I believe the Democrats know they're going to lose, which is why they dedicated Biden to the altar of politics. Biden is nothing more than the Republicans and what they did when they gave us, when we gave them John McCain. John McCain was a loser. We just didn't have anybody that can even go up against Obama. So we had to send the body somewhere. So here's this guy named John McCain from Arizona who was a loser. And we gave him up. Obviously, he lost. Biden is nothing more than a John McCain to the Democrats. Uh, he's a loser. 
which by the way, uh, just for record, this month will be two years since Biden died. Since Biden is dead. Two years this month. And I believe that man was not saved. Biden was a liberal. He hated Trump. He voted for gay rights. And he was pro-abortion. You cannot have that and be a Christian at the same time. I doubt his Christianity. And not because I doubt everybody's Christianity. The fruit on the tree was rotten. And um, his fruit was bad. He fought for our country and for that, we thank him. But he died a sinner. So uh, uh, I think that Biden is a McCain for the Democrat Party. Let's see if we can do a couple questions. Uh, let's see what we have here. Brother, do you see anything that's uh, worthy of uh, response? Seems like a lot of people are responding. I just can't uh, get to them all. Biden is a young girl hip hugger. Absolutely. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, the question is, am I a Protestant evangelical? Uh, I am a Bible believer. Okay. That's what I am. You, you want to know what I am? I'm a Bible believer. Um, I'm not a Protestant in, in the sense that, uh, you know, I believe in what Protestants all believe across the board. I'm an evangelical in the sense that I do go out and preach. But uh, I guess when I go out and preach, I don't promote a church or a denomination. I promote what Jesus Christ said, you need to be born again. That's that's what I do when I go out and preach. You need to be born again. That's the concept. So if you're going to put me in a box, put me in a Bible believer. It's only two words, you know, Bible believer. Even with that, people say, well, what exactly does that mean? Uh, oftentimes, when you say, I'm a Pentecostal, then everybody knows everything about you. I'm a Baptist. Everybody knows everything about you. So I avoid being put in a box. I just try to keep ourselves a Bible believer. When we first started preaching, uh, that's what we named ourselves back in the 80s. Uh, unbeknownst to us, today we have about 78 chapters nationwide where I can pick my phone up and call a fellow Bible believer. You need to get out there and go preach at that. We have other uh, Bible believer chapters uh, nationwide as well with uh, the t-shirts, the banners, the megaphones. That's the history of these things. we got people that disagree with our preaching, but the history actually started here in Los Angeles. Those banners have been around since the 60s. A brother by the name of Jeremiah Baldwin uh, went ahead and went out and made those banners. Back in the day, they were just canvas and painted. Uh, Jim Weber actually turned them into vinyl. And so uh, the Christian cars... Uh, the, the, the loud Christian t-shirts, they were all uh, made here. They had Christian shirts back then, but they were just more like a fashion statement. We wanted something bold. And so the history uh, comes here from Los Angeles, and God used us to try to get things going and to awaken our country. Any other questions, brother, that you see? that uh, BLM and Antifa are terrorists, and do you believe in speaking in tongues? Uh, first of all, I don't uh, pray for dead soldiers. I am thankful for dead soldiers. When they're dead, regardless, regardless of who they are, regardless of who they are, uh, there's not much I can do. Uh, be it a soldier, a police officer, your next door neighbor, a co-worker. When you're dead, all bets are off. And so uh, there's not much I can do. Uh, Jesus said, uh, let the dead bury the dead, which is why we didn't do what the Fred Phelps did and stand outside and protest funerals. Let the dead bury the dead. I'm thankful and grateful for, uh, for our soldiers. That gives me the right and the liberty to stand here on the sidewalk and preach. Uh, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, is nothing but a piece of paper 
had it not been for the bloodshed of those men and women over the centuries. And so uh, I am extremely thankful. I come from a military family. My father did time in the Korean War. My brother did uh, over 20 years, 86 Air, uh, 82nd Airborne Special Forces, Fort Bragg. My uh, second brother, he did four years as a chaplain's assistant. So we're well into uh, praying for our soldiers because uh, let me tell you, when you got a child who joins the military, you're going to be praying for our governor, for our president. We're going to be praying for, uh, you know, our, our military. And so my father would call family meetings at least once a month where we would pray for our president, for our government, uh, for our military, and specifically for our brother. When my brother was in the 82nd Airborne in Fort Bragg, you have a fort within a fort. And they always kept a group of soldiers in there. And when I say a group, it could be 300. And they can go anywhere in the world in a New York second. Once you're inside this little camp, you uh, cannot talk to anybody. You can't make a phone call. You can't do anything. So when my parents didn't hear from my brother, we knew that he was on ready to go on standby. And um, he was involved in a lot of hot spots that we had that you probably won't ever hear about. But our, our military goes there. So I'm extremely thankful for our military. Any of you that served, I salute you and thank you. I may disagree with you on theology, and I hope you get saved, but I do have to thank you for what you've done. What was that second question, brother? Okay. The question was, do I speak in tongues? Do you believe in it? Uh, yeah, that's that's a good question. It's one that I ask, I get asked all the time. Um, I don't speak in tongues in the way that maybe most Pentecostals do. But I do believe in the gift of tongues. It's amazing, in my opinion, how people will say I'm a Pentecostal. When, when you read the book of Acts, on the day of Pentecost, tongues was not the unknown language. Tongues was actually a language that somebody else understood. So with that, I sincerely do believe in tongues, and it's meant for preaching, okay? Uh, I have spoken in tongues. One time I'm on Bourbon Street preaching to a bunch of drunks, and I said something like, and for those of you drunks that are out there, I'm going to speak your language. Uh, rah, rah, rah. Well, about five minutes later, I had this Hindu come up to me, and uh, he was pretty ticked off. Evidently, what I said went right after his God. That's what he said. I didn't piece it together till after he walked away that it was my drunk talk that made him go into the language that he said. So uh, when I believe a, a Pentecostal tongue, I believe it in the actual language so people can understand. That's Bible. That's Acts chapter 2. You can't miscommunicate that. I do believe in the tongue of an angel. I do believe in unknown tongues. But that's only for your own edification. For me, myself, personally, uh, you know, my testimony is not uh, very Hollywood. Uh, I've never seen bright lights. I've never heard voices. I don't have angels appear to me. Uh, God speaks to me in English by using the Bible. And uh, I was so inspired by what I read. I went out and did. And 40 years later, this is what I'm doing. And so uh, uh, to answer that question, like I said, it's yes or no. Uh, it is both. Because I do believe in an unknown tongue, a tongue of an angel, which we do find in the Bible. But if you're Pentecostal, I do some research on that. As a matter of fact, there was a small book out in Hazusa Street where one of the elders in Hazusa Street said, you know, tongues is not a blah, blah, blah. It is another language. And what they did is they send about four or five people out to another country with chaperones and they spoke in tongues 
just as they did in Azusa Street. They all came back with the same report. Nobody understood that. Um, so, uh, again, you want my opinion? That's my blunt opinion. Brother, anybody else got anything? And, oh, last thing, uh, tongues is not salvation pending. I'm fairly limited to this group, and I have a question. A while back, you said in a podcast that when the white man becomes a minority, it's over for America. What did you mean by that? What was that? I, I, I just could barely hear you. In a podcast, you had said that when a white man is a minority in America, it's over. What did you mean by that? In the projects, when I said a white man... What was that? When the white man is the minority in America, it's over. Uh, I've never said that. Uh, I don't know where they got that information, but I'm sure glad I was able to clarify that. I've never said the white man is the minority. Um, I, you, when it becomes. When it becomes. Um, well, um, a perfect example of that is the UK. If anybody's ever gone to the UK... When was the last time anybody has been to London? London is overridden with Muslims. The white man is the minority, and he he doesn't have any more rights. You're either a Muslim or an Indian. And, and just for record, it's the red dot on the forehead Indian, not the feather Indian. You're either one of those two, okay? I, call me a racist. But that's the reality. Go to uh, the UK and try to speak against Islam. Hey, buddy, you're in trouble. So uh, I would say when that happened, a good illustration is uh, the UK. It can happen. Uh, I, I blame not the white man. I blame not the Democrats for the problems in America. What I blame is the church. You, believers pastors, those of you that are involved in Christianity, because you've done nothing, you're the reason why we have all these problems here. And so you're the one that I blame. Not the color of skin. I just get away with it because I have brown skin. A white guy can't say half the stuff that I say, or he'd be a racist. Me, when you're a minority member, you get to play the race card. It's, it's, my, it's my right I got, a, I got a minority card, and I get to do it. But if you're a white guy, you can't say uh, what I would say. This pretty much wraps up our 45-minute first session, guys. And um, I would want to share something with you. Next Wednesday, we're going to be at the DNC. I'm a street preacher. We're going to give you an interview and you're going to have uh, uh, boots on the ground telling you exactly what's going on out in that street of those places. Uh, the following week, we'll have another live feed, only this time it'll be over in North Carolina. And again, I'm going to give you firsthand. There is no other ministry that has been doing what we've been doing. We've been hitting the DNC, the RNC, since the 1980s. Okay, you've got some newbies coming around who want to pass out tracks or hold the sign. Uh, we know how to attack these events. You're going to have Black Lives Matter, Antifa, pro-abortion, pro-gays, you name it. Everybody's going to be outside, and we're going to be out there preaching to them. Now, don't think uh, that we're just going to be out there uh, worshiping the Lord. No, we've got a message for each of those groups. We have banners for each of those groups. And uh, the action isn't necessarily inside the convention, it's outside. And this is a place where the eyes of the world will be watching. It's amazing. When we go to an event like this, how many people will come up and say, wow, I've seen Christians like you uh, on video, but from another country, they've never seen what we're standing for and how we preach. And it's a bit shocking to them. So we do ask for your prayers. We do ask that you pray for us because uh, it's going to be hot. We're going to have some long hours. I'm working with some boys that are willing to uh, take the punch and uh, do whatever it takes. Uh, we're going to definitely work with the police as much as we can. 
why these cities want to have an event like this is beyond me, because what the media doesn't show you is every night the riots, the burning, the looting that take place. When that's removed, then everybody comes and cleans it up. And in the morning, it looks like nothing ever happens. That's really what happens at these Republican and Democrat conventions. The police don't really uh, do much. They're there. But at this point on an event like this, it's the federal government. You'll have National Guard all over the place. It's now uh, a big event, you know. And so we plan on being there to remind everybody if we want God to bless America, it's time we start blessing God. And so if you wish to go beyond prayers for us, there is a link down where you can support us. Um, you know, somebody sends a dollar, I stretch it into a dollar ten. Okay, we don't uh, buy a $75 million jet plane. We don't eat steak. Uh, you know, we are the boots on the ground. We really, we're willing to take the price of what it is that we're doing and go out. And if you want to invest in that, you may. Uh, we're not 501c3, so you won't get a receipt. Uh, you know, we're under the auspices of God loves a cheerful giver. And hopefully that's what you would be a cheerful giver if you wish to go beyond prayers. However, we would love, boots on the ground, would love those air support of your prayers. If you wish to go on the YouTube channel of Reuben Israel, uh, press subscribe, hit the bell button, and sh like and share and comment, and this way we'll be able to get a little bit more active. But if you don't hit the bell, you won't be notified. So that's a little bit uh, from, uh, from my end here. Thank you all. I hope you enjoyed yourself on this first, this first live feed with many more to come. God bless you, and don't forget about the God of the Bible. Truth is truth, lies are lies, God don't take no alibis. Right is right, wrong is wrong, don't go walking where you don't belong. Decided is to be decided against the Lord who wants your heart. He heals the sick and the brokenhearted, a life forever in His love.